Hi, hi everybody. Thanks for joining Art Kirsch and myself on Celebrating Act Two as we again talk to the lovely Dr. Liz Lister. Dr. Liz, it's great to see you. I always learn so much from you. Thank you. It's always fun to chat with you guys. So my my lead in today is that oh, we've been doing a lot of things uh, with some friends of ours uh, professionally, and I've been fooling around with chat GPT and artificial intelligence. I mean, oh, it's been something that's sort of been in the medical field for a long time in uh, research in um, uh, drug interactions and things like that. Uh, but it's getting to be more and more uh, employed, is it not? What, what are the latest things that we can expect that AI will be, artificial intelligence will be helpful uh, or dangerous for us in, uh, in the medical world? Well, I love this topic. AI has been around as far as a topic of discussion since the 1950s. Did you yeah. know that? Wow. That's been that, yeah, a long, long time ago. And so I, I, I went to check the definition. What is really the definition of AI? And it's a technology that is able to perform tasks that usually require a human level of intelligence and insight. So I'm going to answer your question. However, I want us to just keep in mind that what we're talking about is a tool. We're talking about a tool. We're not talking about sci-fi movies where robots take over the doctor's role or anything like that. I personally think there will be a role for us human beings. I think that we have this as a tool uh, that we can use. There's a few areas where it's been particularly in use. Uh, the biggest one that people probably are aware of is radiology. Have you heard about it being used for no. Being no. films? Yeah. So radiology, because it is looking at images, was an early adopter field for all kinds of technological support. All right. Even a friend of my mom's, you know, my parents are in their 80s. They're our doctors. And one of their friends in their circle He's a radiologist. He's retired now, but it took him a long time to retire because he was able to continue working on his computer looking at the images. All right. So we have live radiologists around the world that are able to look at imaging. However, we now have computer analysis. So this is very big in CAT scans and for women also in mammograms. Okay. So the AI, those algorithms, they're especially good at finding hard to find things, right? You have a scan done, a woman has a mammogram, she wants it to find a tumor very, very early and it's very, very small. That's the goal. Yeah. And computer, yeah, so AI computer algorithms help with that. So early detection will Im is improving, okay? Sometimes along with that can be what we call false positives. So that's where we need the AI to continue learning. Uh, but it, while we're getting it up to speed, finding small lesions on imaging, which may not be anything, might not be a cancer. All right. Yeah. So there, well, it's going to get rid of people that quickly. Right. So that's a big area. Radiology is expected that uh, by now, probably by now, over a third of radiologists use AI in some uh, shape or form in their wow. practice. Yeah, well, in, in the same in the same vein, I I've been uh, uh, because I had a many many years ago. I think I'm uh, well into my sixth year of uh, cancer free from a melanoma that I had. Uh, I I. I have uh, my skin checked for skin cancer all the time. I know that one of the vast uses of AI has been to go over hundreds of thousands of samples of uh, benign and malignant uh, skin lesions so that uh, they have a better shot at quickly determining whether or not something that they observe is that. But I, but I see it more as a second opinion. That's right. So in other words, they they yeah. may may send out for analysis, but then still a human being has to come and say, "Yep, yeah, that's right," or oh, it "Got it wrong," or "I have to look further uh, to make that final decision." So it's it's not an absolute, right. and I think that that's the that's danger right. is when we use it as an absolute because I think most people are thinking about 
Well, this is when you call Amazon uh, medical services, there's going to be an AI receptionist who's going to check right. his or her database and diagnose you over the phone. That's the part that I think is people thinking about that may be a little bit more dangerous. Right, exactly. I mean, when people people get nervous about it, what you're talking about is another really great and important application of AI, and that's what we call treatment algorithms. Hmm. So everything you just described, millions of samples of biopsies put into computers and also with the patient outcome. That way they can see who was right, who was wrong, and then it can help determine the algorithm. How quickly does this person need to have a biopsy? How, how much, how aggressively does the person need to be treated? Mm. Okay, the decision-making tree for the patient can be improved by the use of AI. Another, app, another sounds, application. Yeah, all of that sounds very positive. Yes, yeah. There's another application, which is patient safety. Mm, yeah. Patient safety. So hospitals can use AI to track infection, what happened with the patient, what treatments were given, what did the path, what did the lab grow, what did the cult grow of the organism that caused the infection. The we can use computers to help integrate all of this information and improve patient safety. You know, there could be a way. Okay, again, I like to keep away from the idea of the robot in charge because I don't think that we're in danger of that anytime soon. Uh, but for example, there can be ways for computers to measure how long surgeons are actually washing their hands for before doing a surgery. Yeah. All right, this is good. This is improving patient outcomes. Sure. Right, so patient safety is an, another application that's currently being used and it's improving all the time. I think that uh, one of the interesting things is that uh, uh, and people I've spoken to about uh, these, uh, since uh, COVID, we've had a lot of Zoom meetings with our doctors as opposed to going into the office and things like that. And that seems to be on the edges of AI, although it's really not, it's just a, uh, it, it went from uh, the doctor visits you at your home because they made house calls, which I no longer do, to where well, you went to an office and you were always being delayed 15 minutes, but God forbid you're a minute late and you get charged and I'm sorry, you're too late kind of uh, scenario. But I think that the, the biggest thing that I worry about is that many people are going to be using it as a new improved version of Dr. Google. So people that's right. Around. That's really, and, you're, you're right. That's very important. It's very important because AI works on the basis of pattern recognition. So we know we learned that. I think some lawyers learned that lesson the hard way. Someone who prepared a, a whole bunch of briefs with Chat GPT and didn't actually do the work to verify if it was true. Okay, so. Uh, there's there's some downsides, and we need to look out for those. We still need to apply our human brains and analysis. I'm aware of uh, by unconscious bias in sure. medical in the past medical literature, and if you go mm -hmm. back into back far enough, it's not unconscious bias. It was conscious bias mm -hmm. uh, against underserved populations, and they published studies with conclusions, and the computers sometimes we'll spit that information back out how it's proven so we still have to use our human brains yeah. to interpret and make sure that we're uh, doing the best we can so, uh, again as long as we keep considering it a tool okay one more application that i want to share is in the area of language processing uh, this is very big because you you reminded me of this just now art when you talked about the virtual visits a lot of doctors who, when computer charting first came out, it was really difficult for the doctors uh, because it's just a lot easier to write it and turn the page. It wasn't easy for everybody else who had to read their writing, but that was the, now it's logging in and it's going to the right place and putting the right command. It's much more complex. So what's happening now is a lot of doctors are using scribes and transcription uh, services. A lot of are powered by AI. 
All right. Ah. So this, this is hopefully, this has the potential to help doctors and to also help doctors avoid the burnout that was happening when hospitals were converting all the way over to electronic charting. It's really, really difficult. It's still a challenge. And so hopefully AI can actually help improve that. If the doctor, imagine the doctor being able to go into a room in an in-person appointment and just being able to have a conversation with the patient yeah. and the computer takes the note. That's a possible application of AI that out there being uh, tested and uh, developed right now. Mm. Well, so as long good. as as long as the uh, AI doesn't do things like what Spellcheck does to my emails. <laughs> That's absolutely true. I tell you what, how about if instead of the AI being artificial intelligence, what if the AI are augmented? What if yeah. we use it as a tool to augment yeah. our own That's intelligence? Good. Yeah, good. And I think good. that's the that's the important thing that even those of us, uh, my my background is technology, is that it's a tool, but it's not a replacement, and 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 it's going to get better and better and better, and then people are going to rely on it more and more and more. But like you said, there, uh, and I do remember reading about attorneys who were turning in these magnificent briefs, other than the fact that they got the quotations wrong, and they uh, uh, they get left out of court by the judge and no attorney wants to have that happen to them. That's right. Well, Dr. Liz, it's great to take a kind of a look into the future of medicine. Um, I really appreciate that. And it makes me feel a little bit better about AI um, in use in my healthcare. Good. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.